The ball game moves now to the giant half of number two. Jeffrey Leonard will lead off. Last year, six home runs, 42 RBIs, 279 batting average. And as Steve told you, he's had his share of injury time. Until he hurt his wrist last year, he looked like he was going to go to the Hall of Fame. Was seemed to be having one of the best years of his career, and then it just took away all of his power, Jack, and he wound up having surgery on it. That's pretty well hit. Back she goes. Back, back, back. Goodbye. A home run for Jeffrey Leonard. And that makes the score of the ball game Cubs two, Giants one. Well, <laughs> there's a fella giving the others a handicap. He's carrying his youngster in one arm. With the wind blowing out over the left field scoreboard, anything up in the air to left field is going to go out of the ballpark. And there you see. The Young lady with a souvenir. Hey, she got it. <laughs> Watch it one more time. Rick Sutcliffe tries to get inside with the fastball, and Jeffrey Leonard hits his third home run of the spring. They and doesn't really want to give up on one. this, but finally has to. Nobody on, nobody out. Tilly Davis, the batter. Here's one of the favorites of the Giant fans, and certainly a favorite with Bob Lurie, the owner of the ball club, because a couple, three years ago, the Giant. Uh, Big Dome staff, strategy staff, the insiders up there wanted to trade him, and Lurie is the one who I understand put his foot down on that. No, I don't want to trade with Chile, and it turned out to be a very, very good decision. 13 home runs last year, 70 runs batted in, 278 batting average. You're watching Cubs baseball on WGN Television Channel 9 Chicago. I'm Jack Rickhouse along with Steve Stone. Ball two strike one the count. Tilly Davis is going to have to play some center field as well as right field this year. They want to get some more playing time for Candy Maldonado. Big curveball by Rick. And Maldonado last year primarily as a pinch hitter. At 2.52. Yeah, originally in the starting lineup today, they had uh, Aldretti in center and Davis in right. They have since interchanged them. Maldonado hit 18 home runs with 85 RBIs, and that's the kind of production you look for. So they're going to get him some time in the outfield, and when that happens, Chili Davis is going to shift over and play center field. He said he's not too concerned about that, but he wants to get his playing time to keep his stroke. Two and two. Foul ball out of play to the left. Full house again. They're going to break a record down here this year, I'll bet you. Can't remind you of uh, a nice summer day at Wrigley Field, all those guys with their shirts off, huh? You'll see it pretty soon. Well hit, very deep to right center, way back, back goes Walker. And that one's gone. So they're playing long ball with Sutcliffe here. That ties it up. Back to back home runs here by Jeffrey Leonard and Chili Davis. And this ball game is all tied up here in the San Francisco half of number two. Chili Davis, no problem swinging from the left side. It's a breaking ball. It just rolls up there, and Chili drives it deep into right center field. Now, now take a look at the swing of Chili Davis. He stays right with this curveball. He's not fooled at all, and Rick is going to have to start taking something off and adding something on. Brings up Matt Williams, number one draft choice. Strike one. Matt got a chance to play because Chris Brown had surgery on his left shoulder in the wintertime and he's not ready to play yet. That caught the outside corner. 0 and 2. Williams has been somewhat of a phenom in the spring. He's got two home runs, 10 RBIs. He's got a couple of game winning RBIs and he's been sticking the ball. That is a fair ball. Backhand pick up by Moreland. The throw. Good work. Nice going, John. Nice going all together. You can't ask much more out of a third baseman than he gave you on that one. Good backhanded pickup by Keith Moreland. Watch it again. He stays with it. This is a tough hop off the dirt. 
Nothing wrong with the arm of Keith Moreland as he pours it over to first base. And we'll take another look at it behind Moreland. He's worked hard, as you mentioned, Jack, and he looks like he's going to make the smooth transition to everyday third base. That'll bring up the catcher, Bob Melvin. He can hit that long ball. Saw him hit a couple the other day over at Scottsdale. Five home runs, 25 runs batted in last year, 224 batting average. Misses the curve. Ball one, strike one. High inside. Ball two, strike one. No one's going to share the catching Day duties with Bob Brenly. Mm -hmm. Dayette, Dernier, Walker in left center and right. Moreland, Dunstan, Sandberg, Durham, the infield third to first. Battery. Tuckless. And Hayes. And there is a, another home run. Wow. They're playing long ball with old Rick. You can see why the Giants are encouraged about their offense, Jack. A lot of people are picking them to win the West, and the reason is they have some guys who can hit the ball a long way. Well, that had a chance to be foul. It also had a chance to be high on the wall. It was a line drive type base hit. Also had a chance to go right through one of the cars over the wall. This is a rocket. They've hit the ball very hard this inning off Sutcliffe. You can see Dayed going down into the corner. The ball's just fair. And it's really scalded. All right. Here's your rebay. Giants have taken the lead. Three to two here in the second inning. Giants and Cubs. This is about the time you mentioned that Bert Brodsky from Keystone Chevrolet is here, Jack, and get away from Rick Sutcliffe's long ball this inning. High. Ball one. You rebate 10 for 13 this spring. I don't think you can get off to any better start than 769. <laughs> can you imagine what that contract would be if he hit that for a year? Huh? Be a whole lot more than he's making now. Two and up. That's a strike. Ball two, strike one. Well, your rebate made up for it. He. Uh, Committed an error on Dayette in the first inning and made up for it by being the key, the key man on a double play. Made a pretty good pickup on Dunstan. Ground ball, right of the mound, right of second. Base hit. Another base hit. Four men have batted safely in this inning. Three of them have homers and one a single, and that brings up Hammaker. Last year, as we pointed out, was on the disabled list all year. This is a time when you look for Atlee Hammaker to lay it down. You know, pitchers need practice on the sacrifice as well as everything else that they do. So look for him to bunt the ball, and he's going to try to keep it away from Keith Moreland at third base, who should be charging. You'd like to see Leon Durham field the ball at first if you could. Let's see what Atlee does. That's it, and that's what he tried. You could see he was facing first base. Strike one on the foul ball bunt. Cubs and the Giants. Boy, oh boy, what a legendary rivalry. There's a bunt, foul ball. 0 oh and 2. Cubs made some roster moves today. They sent nine players to the minor league camp. They were pitchers Carl Hamilton, Jackie Davidson, George Messerod, catcher Bill Hayes, who's doing the honors behind the plate today, infielders Mike Brumley and Mark Grace, despite the fact Grace had three hits yesterday. He'll be back in the not too distant future. He looks like a good one. Rolando Rooms, Dwight Smith, and Darren Jackson round out the nine players sent to the minor league camp. That brings the roster to 37, including six non roster players also in camp. Well, they have to have the rosters down to 25 by opening day. They can carry 40 plus some non roster players at this time. I'm sorry, it's 24, isn't it? Yeah. They can have 25, but they're, they're going with 24 these days. 
Apparently, all 26 teams decided they didn't need the extra guy, Jack, so <laughs> we're going to go with 24. Well, would that be termed a kissing cousin to collusion? Just a wise economic move. It's a hot potato, isn't it? <laughs> Incidentally, Bowie Kuhn is in the Valley this week. He's, of course, here in appearances with his book. And uh, he says he doubts if some of the things that are going on have been accused of being collusion or really collusion. He said, for one thing, he can't imagine 26 owners agreeing on anything. As a matter of fact, less than half of them voted to oust him. He's, the votes he got normally would be a landslide victory in an election. One of your old buddies up here, Al Rosen. Oh, hey, Al. There's a throw to second. And there is a put out on Uribe trying to steal. 2-6 for the put out. And so as we go now to the Cub half of number two, it's the Giants three, Cubs two. Well, here's a fellow who says this one has the earmarks of an 1817 game with the wind down here. He ought to know he's contributed to enough of those. This is Al Rosen, the head man of the Giants. Al, good to see you. Thanks, Jack. Nice to be here and nice to see you. It's a great day. The wind's blowing out. The hitters love it and the pitchers hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've hit a few out of these uh, Arizona skies yourself a few times. And, well, you get uh, up in that wind, most anybody can, Jack. Al, uh, you guys actually think you have a real good run at the division title, don't you? Yes, we believe so. Our, uh, our ball club is pretty well set. The question mark, uh, one of them is right out on the mound now, Atley Hamacker, who's coming back from a shoulder operation. But he's been pitching very well so far this spring. The other question mark is Roger Mason, who went down last year with tendonitis, and he pitched very well yesterday. So we kind of think that our ball club, with the rehabs coming back as strong as they have, and with a set lineup, we think we've got a, a pretty good shot at the National League West. Well, it'd be fun to see this one played again as a playoff for the championship, wouldn't it? Oh, I wouldn't mind that at all. <laughs> that was Leon Durham, by the way, grounding out second to first. Al, have a great year. Fine Thanks, us. Jack. Nice to be with you. And Al Rosen, one of the all-time greats and, of course, a Hall of Famer if you ever saw one. That looked like just a routine ground ball to second base, but actually Leon Durham hit the ball hard, and that bodes well because he wants to show Gene Michael that he can hit the ball against left-hand pitchers, something the Bull has done most of his career, but the last couple years he's fallen off against the lefties. Here's Chico. He's got himself a base hit. That hit the base. He's going to go for two. The shortstop finally has to chase it down, Uribe. And so Mr. Chico Walker has himself a very, very welcome accidental double. And Jack, I'll tell you one thing. There isn't too many people in camp who are doing more than Chico Walker is doing at this time. He's playing well in the field. He's hitting everything that everybody throws, hitting well over 300. And here he contributes once again. And I know he's one of the favorites of Gene Michael. He really likes his versatility. That was very close to being what you might term an infield double. Matter of fact, the shortstop finally chased it down. Bill Hayes, the catcher, is up now. The score of the ball game three to two in favor of the visitors from Scottsdale. You should have told me you were going to wear yellow. We look like two giant bananas up here. <laughs> Bill Hayes, the catcher, is up. They're giving him a good look too. This is they've given Martin and Christmas as backups to Jody. Last year at Omaha, this fellow had two homers, 18 runs batted in, and a 2.39 batting average. As a matter of fact, uh, they still might send Hayes down. But, you know, they always reserve the right to bring him back up. And sometimes that'll happen in a hurry. Man on second represents the tying run. One out. Hayes, number eight in the batting order, is up. Atley Hamaker is the pitcher. There's another base hit. Right inside the bag at third. That's going to be an extra base hit as well. Hayes is headed for second base. The ball game is all tied up as Chico Walker crosses the plate. The score of this game now is San Francisco three, the Cubs three. Man on second, one away, and Sutcliffe is up. Billy Hayes drills this ball down the line past Matt, past Matt Williams and into the corner, and the Cubs continue to pound Adley Hamaker. This is his first start of the spring, only his second appearance. He only had two innings under his belt before this outing. And take a look at this shot. Here comes Walker trying to steal third, and the ball comes rolling by him. Not much Williams could do about that. Sutcliffe at bat now. 
And he can take a pretty good toe hold too. He's the kid hitting a thousand. He's two for two this spring. One of the better hitters in the National League. Strike one. That is a called strike. Oh, and two now to Rick. You know, uh, Bowie Q said, how can you get 26 owners to agree on anything in the subject of collusion when he said, most of the time, you can't get three of them to agree on where to have dinner? Ground ball picked up by Hamker, dropped, picks it up again, gets his man. Hayes holds it second, and that'll bring up Dernier. Bobby Dernier, who doubled to start the ball game, was homered in by Ryan Sandberg. Ball game tied, three to three. Dernier in the leadoff spot. Dave Martinez is pushing Bobby Dernier in center field, and the competition is bringing out the best in both of them. At this point, at least, Bobby Dernier is the more solid of the hitters. Dave Martinez, the more solid of the two defensively, as far as going to get the ball, Jack, they both go to get the ball as well as anybody in the National League. Right. I just happen to remember, Steve, a crazy thought. Bill Vex line talking about owners, you know, and there was one owner he didn't like, and he said, this is the kind of a guy that Dale Carnegie would like to punch in the mouth. <laughs> I'd like to see a, a collection of wit and wisdom assembled from the works of Bill Veck, who had to be one of the fine writers of all time. Ball one. I'll tell you where to assemble it. If we could just get it back, it would be to have tapes of some of those sessions after a ball game that we sat in with Veck and some of those famous arguments with Veck and seven other guys, six other guys, five other guys, whatever, he'd take them all on. And as long as the beer held out and the bartender didn't go home, I'll guarantee you those remarks were real, real wit and wisdom, as you would say. Ball two, no strike. Man on second. Ground ball, there's another one. Right between the third baseman and the bag. That'll be an extra base hit for Dernier. He'll make that one easily. And the Cubs have the lead in the ball game. Bobby Dernier with his second double has just scored Bill Hayes from second base. You can tell that Hamaker doesn't have the real good speed because he's not able to get inside on the right handers. And when he doesn't do that, he's going to get hit awfully hard. Bobby Dernier drilling one right down the line. And Matt Williams has worn out a uniform in two innings. Watch it again. He's going to take another dive and another dive in vain. That's the fourth Cub double in one and two thirds innings. They had a game the other day here where they had 12 doubles. 12 two base hits in one ball game. That's the fourth double in the fourth one right down the third baseline. Yeah, every one of them almost almost identical between the third baseman and the bag except of course for the one that uh, that hit the bag the Chico got. With soft tossing left handers Jack you can bet the left side of the infield is going to see a lot of action. That's why they call it the hot corner. huh? Man on second, two out, Sandberg the batter. Strike one the count. Cubs leading four to three. When hitters know the pitcher cannot get inside on him, Jack, they get awfully confident, start to hang over the plate and look for the ball away. Ground ball, one hopper back to Hamaker. And he almost threw that one away. And so. In the inning for the Cubs. Two runs, three hits, no errors, man left. Score, Cubs four, visitors three. Ball four. Well, Jack, our telecasts come along at good times in the spring. The first one right at the beginning of the spring, you talk about some of the youngsters coming into prominence. Now the second broadcast is just about the halfway mark. And for all players, it's different. The veterans who have the team made are trying to round into shape, trying to get their strokes together. But for the young players, this is do or die every performance. Mm -hmm. And you can see it in some of the youngsters on the Cubs. Every time they get in a game, they realize they're playing for where they're going to be this year, whether double, triple A, or the major league team. That is a ball. Clark the batter, Thompson on first. 
He played with Rafael Palmero at Mississippi State. One of the real fine hitters to come out of the college ranks. And how'd you like to have those two fellas hitting back to back in your lineup? I think uh, probably at this point, wait a minute, ground ball. Beautiful flag down by Sandberg in time to the pitcher covering. Or rather to. Uh, that was yes, the Sutcliffe. And so the Cubs have just made themselves a beautiful put out. For all you youngsters who might want to pitch, Rick Sutcliffe takes a chance of getting hurt on this play. Now watch him. He crosses over the bag. And if Will Clark were not a gentleman, he could have run right up the back of Rick Sutcliffe. Watch it again. You have to hit the inside part of the bag, turn into fair territory away from the base runner. Sutcliffe doesn't do it. And fortunately, Clark holds up and tries to hold Sutcliffe up. I understand, Steve, that ideally the pitcher's job on that one is to run to a spot about 10 feet from the bag and then run parallel with the line the rest of the way. And try to turn into fair territory and let the runner peel into foul territory. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Jack, you can get spiked. Jeff Leonard, the batter, man on second, two outs, score the ball game, four to three Cubs. So the Giants have the tying run and scoring position now. Leonard popped one way into the parking lot over the left field wall the last time up. That outfield is going to be waist deep in the horizon most of the afternoon with that wind blowing out today. There's a very high foul ball. Dunstan has the best beat on this one and did he? He did. He picked it off right there at the fence. A great play by Sean Dunstan. Boy that was nifty. All right. Dunstan takes this one right against the fence and just an outstanding play. Score the ball game now as we go into the Cub half of number three Cubs four Giants three. This is not Keith Moreland's play Dunstan has a much better angle he battles the sun the high sky and no fear of the fence at all just takes it away and ends the inning. Ryan Day at leading off Cub half of number three Hammaker still pitching. That's low and away. Ball one Cubs four San Francisco three. Day will be followed by Moreland and Dunson. So we have the three four and five hitters in the batting order. That's inside that looked like a kind of a weak slider to me. And now when you fall behind two and zero, oh and you don't have a real good fastball you're at the mercy of the hitter Brian Dayette looking for something he can hit hard preferably something from the middle of the plate in. Ball two strike one. Jim Quick played umpire John Kibler at first the veteran Paul Rungi at third. It's a veteran crew for that batter Kibler I would imagine is the crew chief. The standpoint of seniority alone. Curve a little outside. Ball three strike one. Hammaker appears to be trying to mix it up pretty much, Steve. Well, he's got to. He's working on the split finger. He's got a slider to go along with that sinker. But nothing working real well for him today. Sky high pop up. And the first baseman, Will Clark, waits for this one. Second baseman's going to take it, however. It is grabbed by Robbie Thompson. The wind, which was blowing out, blew it a little bit over. And so Thompson handled it for out number one. That'll bring up Moreland. The Giants went into last season with two rookies on the right side Will Clark at first and Rob Thompson at second not knowing how either of them would perform at the major league level and what a surprise to the Giants and Roger Craig both of them coming through with the kind of years that you just hope that all of your youngsters have. Morning single and was doubled by Dunstan the last time up. Curve a little high. Ball one. In case you hadn't heard us at the outset of the show, Harry Carey has gone home from the hospital. And uh, that sounds like a pretty encouraging sign up here. I talked to Dutchie just yesterday, and she said Harry walked four blocks, said he was feeling pretty decent. You know that if he can get up and walk around, Jack, you cannot keep that man in the hospital. So he's gone home and hopefully not too far from recovery. Right. In the gap, left center, base hit for Moreland. Fielded by Leonard. That puts a man on, one out, and brings up Sean Dunstan. Look at this. Well, Tark the Shark did it again. UNLV beating Kansas State 80 to 61. 
How about Steve Stone and Rosenberg's fearless forecast, as well as Arnie's on this NCAA? Jack, who do you like in the NCAA? He's a North Carolina man. He thinks that it's going to be the Tar Heels. Arnie says Indiana. Going to lean toward North Carolina. I like him. You like North Carolina. Would you believe I picked Louisville last year? That's pretty well hit. Back she goes. Back, back, back. Hey, hey! Sean Dunstan. Wow. Boy, did he pop that one. All right. Sean Dunstan turned on a fastball inside. And this is a very lively ballpark today. You can see the fastball up. Atley Hammaker cannot afford to get the fastball up. He only throws it about 83, 84 miles an hour. Over the head of Jeffrey Leonard, and it's see you later. Watch the swing of Sean Dunstan. What a lively bat this young man has. The bull got a very good cut at Atlee Hammaker last time, hitting the ball sharply to Rob Thompson at second. There's a bat handle spinner. That's a base hit. It drops past the third baseman Willing and out of reach of Uribe, the shortstop. And so the bull is on base. Not exactly a blue dart, but it looks like a line drive in the box score. And that'll bring up Chico Walker. Here's another score. Duke 65, Xavier 60. The Cubs have a six to three lead now. And Sean Dunstan homers with Moreland on base. And that is the second Cub home run of this ball game. Foul ball. Chico Walker who doubled and scored was doubled in by Bill Hayes the last time at bat. He's trying to advance Leon Durham now. Well, Jack Rosenberg and I have gone out on the line, Jack. It's not Terry here. What's the what's the pick? I'm going to stay with DePaul if they win this one. If they win the Midwest, DePaul will go. Well, we're certainly all rooting for him. I know that. And good luck to Joey Meyer and the rest of the Blue Demons. Well, I'm almost afraid to pick him because when I pick him, that's a that's a sense of jinx. You picked Illinois, didn't you, to go a little farther in the NCAA than they went? As a matter of fact, I did. Yes, and didn't you? I thought they'd certainly get by the first one. Oh, and to the count. Indiana 107 Auburn 90. That game was close for a while and then Bobby Knight and his Hoosiers just took him apart. Two and oh. Make that 0 oh and two. Man on base. One away. Very high foul ball. And Bob Melvin has a chance. Look out, fellas. And the first baseman just managed at the last second, Will Clark, to avoid a collision with Melvin. This is Atley Hammaker's fault. The pitcher has got to come inside the line and take control of this play. Now, he should be there being the traffic cop to avoid the collision between the catcher Melvin and the first baseman Clark. But he stands on the mound, and that's a mistake. So all you young pitchers, remember, you have to call the play. Between that and not getting over to first base to cover on a ground ball that takes the first baseman off the bag, uh, you know, something between first and second, these are the two most common mistakes that not only young pitchers but veteran pitchers make every once in a while. Well, Jack, you just don't have a lot to do on that mound when the ball goes up in the air. So yeah. you should be somewhere. The best thing to do is to learn the fundamentals of the game. You have to be the fifth infielder out there. Bill Hayes. Double in a run, scored one himself the last time up. Cubs out in front, six to three. We're in the Cub half of number three.
One and one. Boy, what a day, huh? Doesn't get too much better. Right around 78, 80 degrees here. Light breeze blowing and a lot of sunshine. Ground ball. Just fouled by inches. One and two. Well, you've told me for a long time, Jack, that there's nothing you like better than huckleberry cordials. And strangely enough, Helen's huckleberry cordials were delivered up here to the booth. And so we thank Art and Helen Bundrack. Well, I was thinking of uh, maybe having Helen deliver them herself <laughs> because uh, Helen Huckleberry is one of the most charming ladies I ever met. So is Helen Bundrock. Two and two. <laughs> Cops. Cubs leading six to three. The ball came in the third. Man on base. There's a fly ball right field. Backing up for this one now is already. He has it. And that retires the side. And so coming along now is Dwayne Stats. I'll be back at the end of six. In the inning, Cubs got two runs. And so that makes the score now the Cubs. Six. Giants three. All right, again, everyone, welcome back to Mesa, Arizona. As we move into the fourth inning with Steve Stone and our producer director, Artie Harris, this is Dwayne Stance. Nice to have you with us. And, Steve, we've had a lot of action, a lot of hitting so far through the first three innings in this one. Tough outing for Atley Hamaker. Rick Sutcliffe having a hard time. The bats are booming today, as happens sometimes in Arizona, Dwayne. And as we move into the fourth inning, Chili Davis will be the leadoff hitter for the San Francisco Giants. Chili Davis to be followed by Matt Williams and then Bob Melvin. Cubs have had nine hits and six of those have gone for extra bases. And the pitch is high to Chili Davis. Of what you've seen, Dwayne, do you think it's overly optimistic to think the Giants are going to be around in September in that pennant race? Not in their division. You know, they have. Well, obviously they have some people who can swing the bat. I think a lot's going to depend upon how healthy their pitching remains. There's ball two, two and zero. Oh, the count to Chili Davis. That's why I think, from the San Francisco perspective, Hammaker's performance each and every time out will be very important for the makeup of the San Francisco club. Sutcliffe falls behind Chili Davis three balls and no strikes and I know that they'd like to see the Chicago area product Mark Grant come through and finally fulfill all that potential he's had since signing with the San Francisco Giants. There's ball four so Sutcliffe walks Chili Davis on four consecutive pitches second walk given up by Sutcliffe. Your thoughts on Sutcliffe so far Steve. The first time out he looked real good Dwayne the second time out he struggled and today he just can't seem to get any rhythm going. This is a tough place to throw breaking pitches and Rick is trying to not only get his curveball down but the split finger fastball together and so far he hasn't had the real good control. He really got massaged in that second inning came back with a decent third. Now he looks like he's digging himself a hole again. Here's Matt Williams a little tap toward third. Moreland scoops the plays at first out there and up to second base goes Chili Davis. That's one of the plays that Moreland is a little concerned about and we've seen him make that play well this spring. Well, he's had two tough chances today. He backhanded one a couple innings ago and then this little short hop in off the right foot plenty of mustard on the throw and he gets him at first base. And Keith looks like he's feeling more comfortable with each passing game. Here's Bob Melvin. Melvin the backup catcher for the San Francisco Giants. Roger Craig a year ago was hopeful that Melvin may see a lot of playing time may actually pitch as a ball might have actually been their number one catcher but he just didn't hit enough and Bob Brindley who swings a very good bat wound up doing most of the catching. Chili Davis, the runner at second. 
And Sutcliffe misses with a breaking ball. He's behind 2 0. Melvin said that if he can just hit the ball a little bit, he's going to be playing. Roger Craig loves him defensively. He has since his days with Detroit. And over here, he knows that he can throw the ball as well as anybody around and hit the ball out of the park occasionally. There's a strike call. Two on the count. Jose Uribe will be next for the San Francisco club. Davis opened with a walk, moved the second on the roller toward third off the bat of Matt Williams. Foul ball back into the screen, so the count goes to 2 2. I think we can get, get our first look at Andre Dawson today. Manager Gene Michael has said he might take the wraps off him in a pinch hitting roll. It'll be interesting to see him swing the bat in a Cub uniform. There's Roger Craig, the San Francisco manager. Norm Sherry sitting next to him on his left. Craig piloted this club to 83 victories last year. And a jam shot and right through Moreland at third for an error. Dayette makes the pickup and Davis moves to third. So Keith Moreland charged with his second spring error. So Moreland on the heels of making a nice play on the roller hit by Williams is embarrassed on this one. After two tough ones, here comes the easy one, and it goes right through the legs of Keith Moreland. Remember, you young infielders, you can always bring the glove up if you start with the glove on the ground, but if you don't get it down, it's tough to stab at that ground ball. And you saw Keith with the glove not on the ground have the ball go right between his legs. How about this guy, Jose Uribe, singled his first time. He has 11 hits, came into the game hitting 769. And he's improved that, so he <laughs> might look for a renegotiation here early in the spring. Sutcliffe delivers a little chop to second. Sandberg will have to go to first, the only play there. Davis scores as Melvin moves into second. And then makes it a 6-4 to four ball game. So Uribe got the bat on the ball and got the run home. Good play by Sandberg. You take these for granted with Rhino in the infield. Off balance throw gets enough on it to get him at first. And it's the third RBI of the spring for Uribe. Now Hammock is going to be lifted and Harry Spillman will pinch hit for him. You see the story on Spillman for the spring. Three of 11. He's a handy man to have on a roster. Can play first and third and can catch by a little in the outfield. Pretty good left handed bat a little pop. He's up there with a man at second and two outs. And Sutcliffe strikes him with a strike on the corner. Six four the score. Cubs on top. And a shot to first picked up by Durham Sutcliffe over to cover and that retires the side Giants pick up a run in the inning no hits one error and a man left and we move into the bottom of the fourth with the Cubs on top six to four. Bottom of the fourth inning from Ho Ho Cam with the Cubs on top it's a six four ball game. And the San Francisco Giants bring on a new pitcher, left-hander Ray Fontenot. Fontenot trying to make this ball club realizes there's a spot in the bullpen for a left-hander. Last year he toiled in a Cubs uniform, had some mixed reviews. Cubs let him go, and now he winds up battling for a spot in San Francisco. And left-handers can bounce around this game for a while, Dwayne. If you throw with the left arm, you got a chance. And there's Don Zimmer, who just joined the San Francisco Giants yesterday in uniform today. He must have had visa problems. 20 pounds lighter. He had <laughs> operation problems. He says he's feeling pretty good. Had his neck operated on and happy to be back in uniform. Just got down here in Arizona and of course a lifelong buddy of your compadre in the radio booth, Jim Fry. Rick Sutcliffe will open the bottom of the fourth inning for the Cubs and then we'll swing to the top side of the order with Bobby Dernier and Ryan Sandberg do. Sutcliffe one out pitcher first his first time and Fontenot misses ball one. There's a base hit up the left field side Sutcliffe 
around first and decides to try for two. Leonard's throw is not in time. A double for Rick Sutcliffe. They placed the ball just fair inside the line. And the Cubs move into double figures in the hit department. Here it is again. This is the fifth double, and it's a fifth double inside the third baseman in the third baseline. Matt Williams getting quite a workout, and Rick Sutcliffe chugging around first into second. Good play by Jeffrey Leonard, just not in time. Well, Bill Lutzer, the production manager for WGN, is watching in Marco Island, Florida. He's got a couple of friends at the game, Dave and Betty Rasmussen. And here's the top of the batting order, Bobby Dernier, who has a pair of two base hits. Shortens up and takes the pinch a little high, ball one. Along that line, Norman Hall is here. He owns the Cubs radio affiliate in Boonville, Indiana. Norman's here along with his wife, Margaret, and they want to send best wishes to everyone back home. One nothing to count, Dernier the hitter. A little foul ball. Infield is in, and normally you'd like to see Bobby Dernier go to the right side, but with Rick Sutcliffe at second base, he's not the best runner the Cubs have. With a hard ground ball to second base, odds are you wouldn't advance him anyway, so Bobby Dernier, who swung the bat well and trying to pull the left-handers, might just take another shot down the line. There's Sutcliffe at second with that leadoff double. And there's a bunt first base side Clark to make the pickup and he gets the tag on Denier. Meanwhile Sutcliffe moves over to third. So Denier bunting is out Clark unassisted. Good play by Denier. He does get the bunt down something he had problems with last year but this is a good one only one play and Will Clark makes it taking it himself. So Sutcliffe is advanced to third. He's there with one out for Ryan Sandberg. You know, coming into this game, the San Francisco pitching staff had not allowed an earned run in 22 consecutive innings, and that ended in a hurry on the first inning double by Denier and the home run by Sandberg. Pitch is upstairs, ball one. Fontenot has a good sinker when he's right, but he had a lot of problems last year with the Cubs keeping that sinker down, especially early in the year. Traded to Minnesota, didn't fare very well over there, and became a free agent. This pitch is low. Two and nothing. He really struggled in the American League once he wound up in a twins uniform to the extent that they cut him loose and he's hooked on here trying to win a spot with the San Francisco Giants. Sandberg fouls this one out of play and it's two and one. Rhino having an exceptional spring, hitting the ball well, playing his usual great defense. He looks like he'd be ready, Dwayne, if they were to start the season tomorrow. Well, he came into this game hitting 429 for the spring and hit a two run homer his first time up. Two one the count. He goes to right field with a fly ball. Aldretti drifting under this one. He makes the catch, the tag by Sutcliffe. He's coming home, and the throw cut off by Clark. Cubs pick up another run. On a sacrifice fly to right by Ryan Sandberg. Sandberg's third run batted into the afternoon, and for the Cubs, that's the seventh run of the ball game. Aldretti without the greatest arm in right field. Doesn't have much of a chance getting even Rick Sutcliffe. Here comes the throw. It's cut off. And Will Clark can't make the relay in time. So the Cubs have a 7 4 lead. And here's Brian Dayette. Dayette batting with the bases empty and two gone. I'm ready whenever you are. Strike one. They had reached his first time. That was on the air charge to the shortstop, Jose Uribe. This one into the dirt. You know, Dwayne, it's going to be a battle now in left field. You got Gary Matthews, who's had a setback with the knee. You've got Brian Dayette, Rafael Palmero, 
Chico Walker has done a great job and he's going to be a swing man but there's a traffic jam out there a lot of decisions to be made and some tough decisions because you have a couple veterans in the mix and a couple youngsters and of course you like experience but you also like to give the youngsters an opportunity to play. Fontano misses again. So it won't be easy for the Cubs to decide what they're going to do as the outfield picture continues to develop. A little roller for the shortstop. Uribe makes the pickup and bobbles the ball. And that's his second air of the afternoon, his third of the spring. And both on Brian Dayette. That ball came off the end of the bat. There was some funny spin on it, but Uribe let the ball play him. Now watch. He plants himself. He doesn't go get the ball as aggressively as he could have. And by letting the ball play him, he commits another error. So Dayette reaches, and it gives Keith Moreland a shot to swing the bat in the fourth inning. Amaker working the first three. Fontenot in his first inning. And the pitch is low, ball one. Dwayne, I think you're going to get some sort of a feeling of what Gene Michael and Dallas Green think about their chances this year by the way they make up their ball club. If they like what they see in the spring and they think they can make a run at it, they're going to go with a basically veteran group. Pitch is low, and the count goes to 2-0. Oh. Well, Matthews, as you mentioned, has been slowed with that bad knee, and he is hopeful of being able to see a little action early this week. But you also have guys like Dave Martinez. You have Drew Hall, Greg Maddox, Jamie Moyer. If you go to the youth in the spring, they might want to give these guys experience for next year. Strike and, call. And maybe view this as a rebuilding year. So depending on what they feel with the addition of Andre Dawson and where they feel this club can finish, I think when you look at the 24-man roster, you'll see if they think they can make a run at it this year. Run home in the inning to make it a 7-4 ball game. Runner at first is Dayette reaching on the air, charged to the shortstop. There's a foul ball. That will square the count at two and two. Sean Dunstan is the on deck man as we get a look at Dayette at first. Both clubs six and three this spring, so both teams getting out of the gate pretty good in the early going. Fontenot with the 2 2 pitch. Instead of move to first, they end his back. Sutcliffe opened with a double and scored on the sacrifice fly to right by Sandberg after being bunted over by Dernier. Pitch is low and we have a full count. Jim Quick gives Bob Melvin a new baseball. Same two teams tomorrow. Steve Trout will do the pitching for the Cubs tomorrow. Trout has thrown the ball well here this spring. He'll be opposed by Mark Davis. 3 2 pitch, a swing and a miss, and that retires the side. Cubs are out, but they pick up a run. One run of the inning on one hit. One error and a man left, and we have completed four with the score Cubs 7, San Francisco 4. On to the fifth inning with the Cubs on top 7 4. Mike Aldretti leads off the fifth for the San Francisco Giants facing Rick Sutcliffe and the first pitch is a breaking ball in there for a strike. Cubs have made a couple changes on the infield. Mike Brumley takes over at third base and Paul Nochi is the new second baseman for the Cubs. This pitch is a strike on the outside part of the plate. So Sutcliffe is quickly out in front of Mike Aldretti nothing in two. Aldretti, Thompson, and Clark do here in the fifth inning against Rick Sutcliffe. One ball, two strikes. Pitches are starting to pile up for Rick Sutcliffe. He hasn't had an easy inning since the first inning. And you don't want him to go too far, especially in the early going after only his third start of the spring. 
Thomas is down and in, so the count evens 2-2. Two -two. Aldretti's fly to left and has struck out swinging. There's a wave and a miss. Aldretti is out on strikes. It might have been the split finger fastball or a changeup, but there was enough off it to completely fool Mike Aldretti. Let's take another look at it. The second time he has gotten Aldretti on strikes. Good off speed pitch, low and away. And here's Rob Thompson. Thompson, nothing out of one. He walked in the third. Should Sutcliffe complete this inning, he would become the first Cub pitcher this spring to work five. Ground ball. Dunstan up with it. Strong throw is there in time. Dunstan to Durham to take care of Robbie Thompson. Two up, two down in the San Francisco fifth. And here is Will Clark. Boy, Steve, you look at the San Francisco club and all the fellows who have had surgery of one sort or another. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Will Clark. I look at Chris Brown. Chili Davis had his sixth surgery in six years this winter. Thompson, Jeff Leonard had four different surgeries in the winter on each knee, his shoulder, and his wrist. They spent a lot of time being cut up this winter. Swing and a miss. Clark out in front. Strike one. You know, and all of them to a man say they're just about back to where they want to be. But you have to wonder how effective they're going to be going, especially in the cold in San Francisco early. Another swing and a miss by Clark. Nothing in two. And of course, the third baseman, Chris Brown, really has not seen any live pitching yet. Well, he said before the game that he anticipates facing it tomorrow, but not in the ball game. Foul out of play. So the count is nothing in two on the left handed hitting first baseman, Will Clark. When you have a man who hits 317 with 49 RBIs like Chris Brown did last year, you know you have to have in the middle of your lineup. He's looking for bigger power statistics this year. He feels he'll be ready by opening day, but they're giving him a chance to look at Matt Williams, who's had quite a spring. The 0 2 is upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Well, the Cubs this past week won five of six, including both ends of a split squad yesterday. Coming into this one, the Giants had won three in a row. A bounding ball foul. Aldretti is struck out. Thompson grounded out to the shortstop, Sean Dunstan. Will Clark is one of those youngsters that burst upon the scene, and he just knows he can hit. You can see it in his face. You can certainly see it by his swing. He's got a good one. There's a high fly ball back into left. Dayette went back. Now he comes in, and he makes the catch to retire the side. So a one, two, three inning. Sutcliffe becomes the first Cub pitcher to go five. We move into the bottom of the fifth. Cubs seven, San Francisco four. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning here at Ho Ho Cam with the Cubs out in front, seven to four. Keith Morland, of course, the big experiment of sorts here at Ho Ho Cam playing third base. We talked with him prior to the ball game about his ability to play third. We talked to Keith Morland before the game about the transition of becoming a full-time third baseman. And Keith, how's it been so far? Well, I feel like I've, I've been able to make most of the plays that I want to make. Uh, still have to work on the fundamental things. Uh, really, it's technique of how to charge the ball, how to plant my foot when I go to my left or go to my right, and just making the good throws to every place. It's a shorter throw. It's a quicker feet throw. And on the outfield, you use your feet and a longer, a long arm. And I'm just working on those kind of things. I feel pretty comfortable at it. I haven't made many mistakes at it. How about the bunt? Have you had a chance to field many of those? I've done all right at that. Uh, the last two have tried and been unsuccessful, so I, I've thrown those two guys out. If I'm capable of doing that, you know, a few times, I think I can stop people from bunting. I think they're going to challenge me. There's no question. When the regular grass is, is high, and it's, they're going to try to bunt on it, but I have to continue to work on that. But I'm not worried much about that as I am the ball to my right. I want to make sure I can pick the ball down the line. Two off Ray Fontenot. So Andre Dawson 
Opening the bottom of the fifth inning, pinch hitting, batting for Sean Dunstan with a long foul ball, and the count is one and two. There's a ground ball foul into the San Francisco dugout. So Andre Dawson wearing number 11. Pinch hitting. Mike Eulis of the Island House in Clearwater, Florida, enjoying his time in Mesa with his friend Dallas Green. Here's the one two pitch. He checks and the pitch is low. So the count stands at two and two. Andre very happy to be coming to Wrigley Field and wearing that Cub uniform. He knows the 368 power rallies as well as anybody there. And lifetime, he's done a whale of a job in Wrigley Field. There's a base hit into right field. Andre Dawson on a 2 2 pitch. Singles into right. In his first appearance in a Cub uniform here this spring, Dawson reaches out and lines it in the right field. Cub fans are not going to tire of seeing this kind of action from Andre Dawson. If he stays healthy and there's no reason to think he shouldn't, he should have a fine year. So Dawson is aboard, and that brings up Leon Durham. Durham is one for two. He's single in the third inning. Runner at first and nobody out. Hamaker worked the first three. Fontenot the fourth. We're in the bottom of the fifth, and there's a big swing and a miss. Durham out in front of the breaking ball. And he missed it. Cubs picked up a run off Fontano in the fourth inning. Left hand hitters have to continually tell themselves to stay in, keep the front shoulder in against left handed pitchers. You have a tendency to open too quickly. Move to first on Dawson, who's back in there. And Dawson at first, Clark holding him. Durham couldn't wait. Two strikes the count. Well, you can imagine the lineup with Sandberg hitting second, Dawson hitting third. You get into the middle part of the lineup. We can make a big difference offensively on this team. Well, Dawson yeah. draws the throw and is you, back. You figure out, depending on the pitcher, where the bull would hit. Probably against the left-hander, he'd be hitting down below Moreland, maybe even down below Davis. But there's going to be a lot of thunder in the middle of the Cubs lineup this year. Could be an exciting year at Wrigley. Two strikes the count to Durham. And a base hit in the right field. Aldretti makes the pickup. Dawson digging for third, and the throw cut off by Thompson. Dawson makes it easily, and the Cubs have runners at first and third with nobody out. That was the story with Ray Fontenot last year. He'd make two good pitches, and then he'd hang one, and that's exactly what he did to Leon Durham. Two good breaking balls. Now he hangs one right in the middle of the plate. The bull rifles it to right field, and Andre Dawson with the great speed on his way to third. The throw is cut off. And Leon is two for three, all against left hand pitchers. No question in Dawson's mind, as soon as the ball was hit into right, he was on his way to third. Runners on the corners, and here's Chico Walker. Walker, one for two on the afternoon, hitting right handed against the two left handers we've seen from San Francisco, Hamaker and Fontenot. And Fontenot's pitch is down and in. Giants have that infield a little closer than double play depth with Uribe and Thompson at short and second. And a chop to short. Uribe mishandles the ball. Now goes to second out there as Dawson scores. Uribe came up with the ball looking toward the plate then dropped it and managed to salvage the out at second. But Andre Dawson scores on the chop to short by Chico Walker and the Cubs now have an eight to four lead. 
Uribe certainly having his problems at shortstop today. He's usually very dependable. But today he's had problems with three different ground balls and that time he missed two. Here's Bill Hayes. Move the first. Chico Walker good speed at first. Hayes has a hit and two trips. He doubled his first time up. You'd expect Walker to go stay out of the double play with a slow man hitting. And I think that's on the mind of Ray Fontenot. He's got a pretty decent move to first base. Walker would like to see his good move so he can read him. But I look for him to take off in this sequence. Fontenot trying to keep him close. Of course, Walker came up last year and swiped 15 bases in September. And is four of five in the steel department down here this spring. There's a pitch low. A single by Dawson, pinch hitting for Dunstan started the inning. Dawson has scored. Cubs have scored in every inning so far this afternoon. And a base hit for Hayes to the right of Uribe. Leonard makes the pickup. So Walker stops at second. Hayes on at first. And now Sutcliffe will be lifted for the pinch hitter Luis Canones. So Canones will hit for Sutcliffe. Rick works five innings. Allowing four runs on four hits. And here's Luis Canones. Hitting 333 for the spring five out of 15. He's making his presence felt in his bid for a utility job. He rolls this one foul, third base side, strike one. Hayes at first and Walker at second. One out with a run home. Pass along some best wishes to a great Cub fan, Susie Lorenz, watching this one at home. And Wally and Celine visiting from Niles here at the ballpark. Here's the 0-1 pitch. It's wide. One ball, one strike. Comes with two runs in the first, two more in the second, two again in the third, single runs in the fourth and fifth inning. They have a chance to pick up more here in the fifth. Fontano slowing his pace out there. There's a pitch high and outside, two and one. Kedona's hitting for Sutcliffe. There's Gene Michael. He's liked what he's seen so far here this spring. There's ball three. I think you'd have to grade Rick Sutcliffe's performance today about 80%, meaning he threw five innings, had a real tough one in the second, had four decent innings in the first, third, fourth, and fifth. Didn't have the control he'd like Dwayne, but didn't throw too badly if you take out that second inning in the three long balls. And as the spring progresses, of course, Gene Michael and Herm Sturette will keep a very close eye on Sutcliffe. Ground ball to third. Williams touches the bag and goes to first. High throw. Park off the bag. One out. The play, the force play at third. So Walker's retired. Hayes into second. And Canona's reaches on what turns out to be a fielder's choice. Louis hits the ball hard. And you see Williams, just a second year player, make a bad throw on the tail end of this double play attempt, pulling Clark off the bag. Williams just has a ball experience out of the University of Nevada Las Vegas pretty good hitting prospect and here's Bobby Dunier two men on with two men out Dunier a pair of hits two doubles on the afternoon 
And the pitch is low, ball one. There's a little tap foul. So the count stands at one and one. Bobby's pulled the ball this ball game a couple of times and he's really pulled it almost the whole spring. I know Gene Michael would like to see him hit the ball to right and right center. You know as the spring progresses and into the season Dwayne he's not going to be seeing that ball inside. They're going to stay away from him and he's going to have to learn to take the ball the other way if that batting average is going to be above 250. He takes this pitch low. And the count is two and one. It was encouraging to see him put down the bunt in the fourth inning. Very much so and that's good sound fundamental baseball with nobody out. Rick Sutcliffe at second base. He pushed it along toward first and moved him over. Fontano misses away and the count is three and one. Paul Nochi is on deck. We saw a lot of this type of performance from Ray Fontano last year. He did struggle the greater portion of the 1986 season. Three one pitch and there's ball four. So Fontano issues the walk. Interestingly enough the first walk given up by San Francisco pitching in this game and that loads the bases Hayes to third Canota's up to second as Dernier draws the base on balls and here's Paul Nochi. Nochi entered the game in the top half of this inning at second base and he's making a run for one of the utility spots on this infield. Not much decided yet as far as utility man the outfield positions and a couple of spots on the pitching staff. Still a lot of competition left in the spring. And Nochi takes the pitch down and in ball one. Nochi originally a shortstop. We've seen him play second base. He's also played some third base. Had over 300 at Pittsfield last year. From what you've seen Dwayne realistically do you think he's got a shot at maybe sticking as a utility man on the 1987 Cubs. Well I think Rowden probably has the inside track. So as you as you fill out the roster with Trio and Rowden he would have to really come on and make some noise and push Rowden I think. A ball no strikes the count. Strike on the outside front of the plate. So the count stands at one and one. Bob Melvin going out to tell Ray Fondo he was aiming the ball and when you do that you don't throw free and easy you have a tendency to keep on tailing that ball out of the strike zone away from the right hand hitter and he wants to settle down Fontenot. There's ball two two and one. Brian Dayette on deck. Base is loaded two outs. Cubs on top eight to four. There's a pitch wide, so the count is three and one on Paul Nochi. Paul could blow this game wide open right here with one up the gap. Fontenot's going to be just aiming the ball to get it in. Sometimes you take something off it, and this is where a hitter just loves to see the pitcher. Bases loaded and have to throw a strike. And here it is on three and one. Strike call. So the count goes to three balls, two strikes. Where's the runners will be off. Bases loaded, two gone, a full count on the hitter. Six runs off Hammaker, two so far off Fontenot. He has the sign from Bob Melvin. 3 2 pinch to Nochi on its way. Ball four. He walked him, and that will force home a run. So Nochi draws a bases loaded walk. Hayes crosses the plate. It's now nine to four. Canotis winds up at third. Denier at second. Nochi with a run batted in. And here's Brian Dayette. Dayette up there with the bases loaded. A nine to four ball game. Here's the stretch. The pitch bounding ball foul. 
Strike one. They yet officially nothing out of three has been on base twice. On errors charged to Jose Uribe. Uribe probably saying don't hit it to me. <laughs> I can't feel the ball. There's too much spin on it. See if you can hit one in the air. And if Brian does hit one in the air he's going to hit it out of the ballpark. Here's the one strike pitch. Swung on and there's a well hit ball down the left field line but foul down into the corner. Scattered a couple San Francisco Giants down there. Jeffrey Leonard is getting a workout in that left field corner. There's been five doubles down into that corner. A few balls laced down there and with soft tossing left handers on the mound. Right handers get the head of the bat out and have a field day. So Dayette down on the count two strikes. They're loaded. Cubs have two runs in this inning. And a five run lead. And this pitch just misses inside and the count stands at one and two. Those Dayette and Fontenot were traded together in the deal between the Cubs and the Yankees. There's another hard hit ball foul down the left side. So the count holds at a ball in two strikes. 76 55 the announced attendance here today. Once again a capacity crowd. I don't think you could ask for any more support from the fans around Phoenix and Mesa and Scottsdale area than how they support the Cubs. Here's the one two pitch. It's too low and that evens the count. Two two. Amaker for three. Fontenot in his second inning. Seems like he's in his tenth inning. <laughs> he's throwing enough pitches. And the two two. Ball three. So after having the jump on Dayette, Fontenot finds himself all the way out three two and we're in the same spot. With the bases loaded, two gone, and a full count on the hitter. Fontenot delivers, and a foul ball out of play. So Dayette, by fouling off the pitch, keeps the pressure on Fontenot to throw a strike. <laughs> Giants also have Joe Price in camp, another left hander. Colin Ward, I'll take a look at him. 3 2 again, and another foul ball. He rolls it back toward the screen. Roger Craig has decided to take Mark Davis out of the bullpen, give him a shot at the starting rotation. He thinks Scott Gerouts can be his stopper and I agree with him Gerouts a good hard throwing right hander. So with Davis moving into the starting rotation that leaves a hole for a left hander in the pen and Fontenot is going to compete for it but not like he's throwing today. He tries the three two for the third time and misses down and in. So he walks home another run. That forces Canona's home. Denier to third, Nochi into second. Dayette has drawn a bases loaded walk. And the Cubs will be sending Mike Brumley to the plate. He is the ninth Cub hitter to bat in this inning. And the Cubs now lead 10 to 4. And Roger Craig is on his way to the mound. So Fontenot struggling here in the fifth inning. It's tough enough to leave any ball game at any time, Dwayne, but especially in spring training when you just can't get anybody out. So Fontenot will depart as the Giants make a change. We'll be back with more in a moment. Silver for Ray Fontenot. Candy Maldonado has taken over in right field, and Mike Aldretti has moved in to play first base. Comstock, a veteran of sorts, started in 1976 with Idaho Falls. 
played in Japan the last couple of seasons. And now he's back. He played with the Yamuri Giants. 1985-86. He signed with the Giants. November 24th of 1986. And now he's given it a try. Trying to make this ball club that really could use a left-hand pitcher. Comstock, 6 feet tall, 175 pounds. Last year was 0-2 with Yamuri after going 8-8 eight eight in 1985. So Comstock takes over for Fontenot, who worked an inning in two thirds, allowing four hits so far, four runs charged to Fontenot. Fontenot is still accountable for the three men on base. Fontenot walked three and picked up a strikeout while he was in there. And here's Mike Brumley, the ninth Cub, to bat here in the fifth inning, facing Comstock. We got a peek at Maldonado a moment ago in right field. He was the Giants MVP of a year ago. Amazing for a man who primarily pinch hit most of the season, but with 18 home runs coming off the bench, you'd have to figure that was just a ton of production. All right, here's Brumley. And Comstock's first pitch, a swing and a miss, strike one. Here's a look at Candy Maldonado. Mike Aldretti has shifted to first base. Maldonado didn't become a regular until about the middle of August last year with San Francisco. The Giants have a crowded outfield this spring. And a strike on the outside part of the plate, so Brumley is quickly behind, nothing in two. You know, Eddie Milner has come over to the Giants from the Cincinnati. He's a pretty good center fielder, and Dan Gladden is a talented outfielder. Along with Maldonado and Leonard and Chili Davis, there's not a whole lot of room. There's a pitch a little wide, one and two. It, it makes you think that before spring training is over, the Giants may deal one of those outfielders somewhere. I think they might have to go get a pitcher, judging by what's happened during the spring, although some guys have thrown the ball well. You can never have too much pitching, and Roger Craig knows that as well as anyone. Here's the one two foul ball back and out of play. Looks like Comstock has in his mind that he wants to get Brumley on a screwball. He's tried him three straight times. He's turning the ball over running it away from the right handed hitting Brumley. Base is loaded for the cut. It's been a three run inning. <laughs> One two pitch he struck him out and that retires the side. So the Cubs settle for three runs in the inning they leave the bases loaded and at the end of five the Cubs are on top ten to four. We move into the sixth inning with the Cubs on top it's a ten to four ball game. A reminder that the Class A consolation and final games will be on WGN tonight starting at six o'clock and we invite you to stay with us for that. A lot of changes for the Cubs as we move into the sixth inning. We have a new battery Damon Berryhill takes over behind the plate and Ed Lynch is the new Cubs pitcher. David Martinez takes over in center field. Luis Canotas remains in the game to play shortstop. So Ed Lynch becomes the second Cub pitcher. Eddie's been out one time this year. Gave up six hits, six runs, six earned runs, and didn't get anybody out. So not the kind of performance that Ed Lynch would like. And you look at his numbers for 1986. He did a good job for the Cubs last year, both as a starter and a swingman out of the bullpen. And that's exactly what manager Gene Michael envisions for him this year. He's got great control. He doesn't overpower the hitter. And he's a man that you can use in any particular role. And he'll probably be a middleman. Well, he hurt his ankle early this spring, and the first time out, he just wanted to get some pitches in, and that's exactly what he did. As you pointed out, Steve, it was not an overly impressive outing for him. He'll face Jeffrey Leonard to open the sixth inning. Leonard homered his first time up. He's one for two. Comes up by six. And the pitch fly ball into center field Martinez right there for it in line to make the catch for the out. So Leonard is out of there. One gone. 
That's going to bring up Chili Davis. I'd like to pass along a big hello to Kathy and Tony Pinazzo watching today. Rooting for the Cubs and liking what they see. Ed Geisler is here from Highland, Indiana as well. They're here from all over. Chili Davis. Davis has homered and walked. Andy McKenna, Stan Cook up in the booth with us, so be on your best behavior. Never any problem there. Pitch is ball one. You know what they say, you're known by the company you keep. And here I am with you. Tom Ayers with them. The 1-0 pitch is bunted. Third base side, tough play. Lynch can't make it. Base hit for Chili Davis. Now Chili Davis is on for the third consecutive time this afternoon as he put the bunt down the third base side. This is absolutely perfect. Nothing Brumley can do. Ed Lynch has to get to the ball. He's not the quickest member of the pitching staff off the mound. But with the good speed of Davis and the fact that he's coming out of the left side, just put that one in your pocket. So Chili Davis is aboard with one out, and that brings up the phenom in the San Francisco camp, Matt Williams. Looked like Randy Kutcher going into pinch run for Chili Davis, so that's going to be all for him. Kutcher, who did a good job last year looking for a spot as a utility man, can play all over the field. Kutcher's one of those guys who may not have caught much attention with basic ability, but he worked hard. This pitch popped foul. Barry Hill after it. And has room to make the play. So Matt Williams is nothing out of three in the second out in the sixth inning. Kutcher remains at first. We'll take another look at this one. You got to get that mask off quickly, and Damon Berryhill does. You see him locate the ball and then toss away the mask. That's good fundamentals. He stays with it and makes the catch. Cubs are very high on Barry Hill's receiving abilities. They like to see him develop offensively a little bit more. They like him as a catcher. Here's the San Francisco catcher, Melvin, taking a breaking ball in for a strike. Melvin lined a homer back in the second inning, a solo shot down the left field line, and then reached on Moreland's fourth inning error. Cubs have been charged with one error, and San Francisco with two. Cubs have out hit the Giants 13 to 5 and lead 10 to 4 as we play in the top of the sixth inning. Bob's had some shoulder problems this spring, but he says it's just a minor inconvenience. He threw out a base runner early in the game, and he's got a very quick release. Look out, up and in as Melvin hits the deck. That evens the count at a ball and a strike. This is one of the things that Dallas Green has said about the pitching staff. He wants to see him throw inside more. And this one takes a couple of whiskers off the chin of Bob Melvin. It's one of the things they like about Greg Maddox so much. He is not afraid to pinch tight. Well, you can protect your outside breaking pitches by pushing the hitter back occasionally. There's a little looping liner to short, caught by Canonis, and that retires the side. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. We move into the bottom of the sixth with the Cubs on top. It's a 10 to 4 ball game. Oh, yeah, see. With the exception of opening day, plenty of great seats remain to all Cub games in April. The Cubs host the St. Louis Cardinals, Pittsburgh Pirates, and Montreal Expos in a key early season home stand. So start the season off right by purchasing your Cub tickets at the advanced ticket windows at Wrigley Field or call Ticketmaster at 559-1212. You'll be glad you did. From Hoho Camp Park, we move into the bottom of the sixth inning. With Steve Stout and our producer director Arnie Harris, this is Dwayne Stats. Nice to have you with us, and we hope you're enjoying the afternoon of Cubs baseball. Cubs meeting the San Francisco Giants this afternoon, and the same two clubs tomorrow from Scottsdale, the San Francisco spring base here in the Cactus League. And our next telecast will be next Sunday, the 22nd, against the Seattle Mariners. That's a 2 o'clock start. The Mariners take on the Cubs, and we'll be with you then. Hope you'll be with us. Randy Kutcher has gone in in center field, and Mike Woodward has gone in at second base. So a couple of changes in the defensive alignment for the San Francisco Giants. And David Martinez, who is occupying the fifth spot in the Cub order, will lead off. There's a look at Woodward at second base. 
And here's David Martinez. Three for 12 on the spring, coming off a great winter ball season. Comstock, the left hander, into the wind, and the first pitch is in for a strike. 7,655 here this afternoon. As the Cubs meet the Giants. David at 330 in Puerto Rico was the MVP of the league there this winter. Pitch is low. So the count stands at one and one. Leon Durham will be next. Here's the pitch. And it's a strike call. One ball, two strikes. Here's the wind. Comstock delivers and a swing and a miss. David Martinez opens the bottom of the sixth by striking out. So Comstock, who got Brumley to end the Cub fifth, opens by striking out David Martinez here to open the Cubs sixth inning. Alan Cockrell is now in left field for the Giants as well. So they not only have a new center fielder, but a new left fielder. Cockrell in left and Kutcher in center. Here's Leon Durham taking the first pitch too low. Leon's wondering what happened to all the right-hand pitchers. <laughs> his fourth at bat, his fourth time against a lefty and three different pitchers. One nothing pitch is a strike on the outside part of the plate. The count goes to one and one. Comstock has shown some pretty good stuff. He's throwing a screwball, a curveball, and a pretty lively fastball. There's a high pop foul. That's going to be out of play. So the count is a ball and two strikes. Well, Cockrell in left, Cutcher in center, and Maldonado in right field to make up the San Francisco outfield. They have Williams and Uribe on the left side of the infield, Woodard and Aldretti on the right side of the infield. Melvin still behind the plate. Comstock delivers and a high pop foul once again. And it's out of play just in front of us here. Chico Walker is on deck for the Cubs. One ball, two strikes. Now the left hander's delivery. Tap up the first base side. That's a foul ball. Picked up by Jim Snyder. And Angel Escobar out there at shortstop now. And Gene Michael looking over his lineup in the spring. Lineups get tough because I have some guys that you haven't heard a whole lot about inserted in the late innings. Breaking ball is low, and the count goes to two and two. It'll be interesting after the curveball to see if Bob Melvin, a veteran catcher in the National League, tries to throw the fastball inside to Leon Durham. That's the place they got Leon last year. So let's see what Melvin will call. The two-two ground ball to the shortstop. Escobar is up with it, and the throw to first is in time. So Durham goes out short to first. We mentioned earlier the Cubs have sent nine players to the minor league camp, including pitchers Carlton Hamilton, Jackie Davidson, and George Messerod. Bill Hayes will be going over, along with infielders Mike Brumley and Mark Grace, and outfielders Rolando Rooms, Dwight Smith, and Darren Jackson. Here's Chico Walker. A pitch, a wave, and a miss, strike one. Aaron Jackson has been impressive as the Cubs announce that he's in that group of nine going to the minor league camp. He's been impressive, and the Cubs have a feeling that in a year or so, we may be hearing more from Darren Jackson. Strike ask two. Ask Jimmy Pearsall to rank the outfielders defensively who are in Cubs camp this year, and he put Jackson at the top, followed by Dave Martinez and Bobby Dernier. So. Jackson certainly has everything you need defensively in the major leagues. The only question, can he swing the bat? 
the two strike pitch to Walker strike three call he's out of there and that retires the side one two three inning retiring the Cubs in the sixth Jack Brickhouse will be rejoining you now through six the score Cubs ten San Francisco four swinging the bats pretty well today with 13 hits limiting the Giants to just five a lively day a lot of balls going out of the ballpark and Ed Lynch in his second inning well good to see Lynch get a scoreless inning after what happened to him the last time out we have a new first baseman for the Cubs that's Rowden ball game in the seventh you know a fellow they've been giving a good look at at first base down here lately is Mark Grace the kid from Peoria they call him amazing grace down there there's a swing on the first pitch and a line shot to right that is a base hit it's a base hit Mike Woodard for Mike Woodard who's batting on a flip flop in the shortstop spot. Well, despite the fact that they sent down Mark Gray's Jack you know that he's going to be a player he's just a youngster with a ball experience at Peoria and you watch him play defensively and swing the bat and you know that one day this is going to be a major leaguer and when he gets here he should be here for some time. Candy Maldonado 18 home runs last year. Despite the fact that he only took over as a regular in the middle of August so he had a lot of production for a man used primarily as a pinch hitter the greater portion of the year. Oh, ask Tom Lasorda. He murdered Lasorda when it hurt the worst. Yes sir he's quite a player they're going to get him some playing time this year. Man on base nobody out ball game in the seventh inning paid attendance seven thousand six hundred and fifteen that of course is another full house. Outfield straight away and deep. Day at and left. Martinez in center. Chico Walker in right for the Cubs. Brumley, Quinones, Nochi, and Rowden the infield from third to first. And that one handcuffs Quinones. And that base runner is on. That puts Ben on first and second. Let's see what they call that. Probably an error. That's a pretty tough error right here. It's hard hit. It's going to be a base hit. You can see it just eats him up. And that'll put runners at first and second. Well, so far they have not uh, charged an error, and they have given a base hit on that one. No, no, they haven't. I don't think. Wait a minute here. Three, four, five. Yes, that's the sixth hit according to the scoreboard. The scoreboard has had its moments today, <laughs> but we'll give them the best of it on this one. Men on first and second now. Aldretti, who's now the first baseman, started out the day in right field. Matter of fact, in the original lineup turned in, he was the center fielder. They switched him to right before the ball game started, and now they moved him from right to first base. And there's a curveball, a little low. Ball two, no strikes. He's had his troubles today making contact, struck out twice. And he's looked fairly weak on the off-speed pitch. But with the wind blowing out, everybody's dangerous in Arizona. Well hit ball, center field, moving over and back. Here's Martinez, and he handles this one, a one-handed catch. It's deep enough to permit the man on second to go to third, so Woodard moves to third. There are giant runners at first and third with one away now. And that brings up... Turns out Cockrell. to be a pretty good play by Dave Martinez running this one down. The ball starts to take off, almost gets over his head. A lunge at the end hauls it in. Cockrell is now the batter. Cockrell hit 258 last year at Shreveport with 14 home runs, 78 RBIs. 6 2, 215. Big yeah. young man out of Kansas City. He's uh, the muscular type. And that one comes in a little bit low. Ball one. Cubs ahead 10 to 4. Both managers have made several moves today. Roger Craig has made more moves than Gene Michael, but they both, of course, have played par for the course on substitutions down here. And you're going to see a box score with a lot of names in it again today. 
It's good, though, Jack, to take a look at all of your youngsters. Even if you know they're not going to make the ball club, you want to get them a little experience at the major league level because it'll pay dividends the next time or the time after that that they come to camp. A little more confidence. Reed has picked up a bat. He'll bat in place of the pitcher. Foul ball. Did you ever hear Casey Stenkel's definition of the secret of managing? The secret of managing is to keep the five guys on the club who hate you from meeting the five guys on the club who are undecided. And that'll do it, huh? <laughs> Jesse Reed on deck, a non-roster player, an outfielder, swings from the left side. Fastball inside. Ball two, strike two. And he's trying to get that double play ground ball with the infield halfway. He wants to get out of this one without any damage. Woodward on third, Maldonado on first. One out. That is just a little bit off at the knees, a little bit outside. Dimensions 345 to left, 345 down the right field line, 410 to straightaway center field. Uh, so the dimensions here are similar to those of Wrigley Field. Wall's about 10 feet high out there, except for center field. Big curveball, took a little off it and really fooled him. All right, that's two out. And Lynch certainly looks better than he did a few days ago out here on that. Horrendous six hit, six run, two walk inning that he pitched with nobody re being retired. Big, slow, breaking curveball away. It's a good spot for it, completely fooling Cockrell. A little high. Jesse Reed. Well built young man. Again, the outfield straight away and deep. That's the way they've been most of the time. Remember what Al Rosen said earlier. This could be an 18 to 17 game. Play deep wind, and cut across. With that wind blowing out. Ball two, no strikes. Crowd pretty quiet right now. They've been a little bit excited most of the afternoon. They've been getting a big kick out of the way the Cubs, of course, have pounded that pitching with 10 runs and 13 hits. Well, if they hold on here and they give every indication they will, Jack, it's a pretty impressive start to spring training going seven and three. Foul ball. Not a whole lot of people expected the Cubs to come out of the gate quite this quickly. They know there'd be a lot of experimentation. I think it, as a whole, the pitching has been a lot better than most everybody thought. Steve Trout having a fine spring so far. Yeah. And a few other of the youngsters throwing the ball pretty well. Jamie Moyer had a very impressive outing yesterday in Tucson against the Indians. Matter of fact, that day yesterday was most profitable for the Cubs. They split the squad and won two games. They beat the Indians 12 to 2 at Tucson, and they beat the Athletics 4 to, no, 4 to 2 at Phoenix last night. They held Canseco to a single in that athletics game. A couple of days ago here, he hit two of the longest home runs I've ever seen, spring or otherwise. That's a curveball strike. They got him to retire the side. Reed is out of there. Two strikeouts for Lynch. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left. Everybody on your feet, let's take a seventh inning stretch. Score the ball game, the Cubs, 10, the Giants, four. The all new 1987 official Chicago Cubs gift catalog is now available to Cub fans. More unique Cubs items are featured in this year's catalog than ever before. To receive your copy, write to Cubs gift catalog, Department 100M, Wrigley Field, 1060 West Addison Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60613. Illinois residents may receive a copy by calling toll free 1-800-621-5227. Out-of-state residents should call 1-800-548-4000. We have a new pitcher now for the Giants. 
Randy Bacchus, B-O-C-K-U-S. Out of what I like to think of, Jack, is the Harvard of the Midwest, Kent State University. Now, why would you want to say something like that, Steve? Along with Gene Michael and myself and <laughs> one of the old greats of the New York Yankees, the departed Thurman Munson, all of us members of that Kent State Golden Flashes baseball team, as was Randy Bacchus. All right. The batter, as we move now to the cub half of number seven, is Damon Berryhill, who's taken over as the catcher, starting catcher with Bill Hayes. Cubs out in front in this ball game by a score of 10 to 4. Bacchus, right-hander. That one's fouled. No ball, strike two count. So we have the usual multiple substitutions. The way it looks out there now, Cockrell in left, Kutcher in center, Maldonado in right for the Giants. There's a high foul. That'll be in the crowd back of the plate. Williams at third, Escobar at short, Woodward at second. Aldretti at first. Aldretti is at uh, first base now. The pitcher, Steve told you, is Bacchus, and the catcher is still Bob Melvin. Yeah, I see Ron Say played third for Oakland last night against the Cubs, went 0 for 4. You know, the guy who's looking good for the Cubs, especially the stats, and you tell me about him, Steve, is DePino. Now, last it? night, for example, you know, he struck out four through a shutout two innings. There's a drive deep to right. Back she goes. Way back. Back. It's against the wall out there. And this is going to be a two-base hit for Barry Hill. Cubs have had a lot of production out of the catcher spot today. Hayes came up with a couple of hits, and now Damon Berryhill drives one over the head of Candy Maldonado, one hopping the wall. Berryhill doubled against the Indians yesterday in that ball game, too. And he's not doing anything to hurt his stock, Jack, as a backup to Jody Davis. All right. And on second, that brings up Quinones. Now he's not known primarily as a pull hitter, but good solid baseball is for him to pull the ball to the right side and move Damon Berryhill over to third. So he's going to be trying to get the head of the bat out quickly and hit the ball to the right side. Low and away. Randy Bacchus. 6'3", 205. Last year split his year mostly at Phoenix where he was 11 and 6. Had five appearances for the Giants in September. Ran on second. Outside. Ball two strike one. I noticed that Mark Grace had uh, three for four in that ball game against the Indians yesterday. So he gave the Cubs a little something to remember him by. That'll make Pete Benakin very happy. The fellow owns that Peoria Chiefs ball club, of course, has the Chicago Cubs arrangement. And Pete, who's done a fantastic job down there of promoting baseball, professional baseball in my old hometown, uh, called the shot on this guy early in the season. He said he's going to be a good one, and he certainly did have a great season down there. He and, of course, uh, Smith, too, from the Cubs. You probably don't want that. Low and away. Ball two, strike two. WGN Television, Channel 9, Chicago. You're watching Cubs baseball. I'm Jack Brickhouse, along with Steve Stone, and there's a foul ball against the screen. You know, this ball club has got a pretty good lineup of outfielders. 
took a look at that list this morning. These are names that, you know, most of them are ready for the majors, and or if they're not already in the majors. Ground ball. Good glove job by the first baseman on that one, Cal Donato. Pitcher taking the toss. Make that on. Made that uh, first baseman. Randy Bacchus does this play well. And as you see, with a man going from second to third, you have to turn back toward the field quickly. Now watch Will Clark. That's Mike Aldretti. And on the tail end, Randy Bacchus. Watch him turn toward the field of play and pick up the man at third base. And that is fine execution for all you youngsters out there. On the play, the man on second advanced to third. So Barry Hill is on third base with one away. Infield in at all four positions. And one of the things that happens in this situation is you need a strikeout. And a lot of times a pitcher will throw breaking balls to the opposing pitcher. So you have to be heads up at third for that short pit pass ball or wild pitch. The batter, of course, is Lynch, the pitcher. Infield pulled in. The Giants can ill afford to permit another run at this point. They're down 10 to 4. One away and a man on third for the Cubs. Now they might want to work on a suicide squeeze situation just for practice, even though during the season six runs up in the seventh, you probably wouldn't be squeezing home the seventh run. Is Barry Hill that fast? No, he really isn't, but you want to get pitchers used to a situation like this. I'm not saying that they're going to do it, Jack, but they might. And you keep your eye open for it. Big swing. Ball one, strike one. I think you are aware of the story of Lee Walls, the Dodgers. He was on third, and Frank Howard, the biggest, strongest slugger in the league, was up. And Alston had a hunch that his ball club was going to sleep too often out there, so he put on the suicide squeeze. And that's strike three on the curve. Put on the suicide squeeze just for the practice, just to see if they were awake. And Walls looked at the third base coach, Pete Reeser, and he, you know, as much as to say, is he serious? Walls said he's serious. Uh, Reeser said he's serious, so he sent him in on the suicide squeeze from third to the plate on the next pitch. And with that, Howard, who had not caught the sign, took the full swing. And Wall said, oh, he's, he's swinging. And he hit the dirt right then and there with a face, hey, face first dive. He took no chances at all. You can see your life passing before your eyes. There's a fly ball, short left, running hard for it, and making a very fine catch out there is Cockrell. Very fine work indeed. And so that retires the side, the end of seven. Score the ball game, Cubs 10, the Giants four. Palmero's now in left field in place of Brian Dayette. As the Giants come to bat against the Cubs in the eighth inning. Cubs leading by a score of 10 to 4. Cockrell comes over, makes a fine catch. Gets Randy Bacchus out of some trouble. And hangs on. Darren Jackson has moved into right field. Rafael Palmero in left. Escobar leading off the eighth inning. Angel Escobar, non-register player, uh, not registered player at this point, non-roster player at this point. <laughs> Ten to four, Cubs, eighth inning. And uh, now we have a situation where the only players who played this whole ball game. Are the Giants third baseman and catcher Matt Williams and Bob Melvin and look for that to change before we're out of here. Again I have a scorecard which is guaranteed to never win the Palmer School of Penmanship Award. Ball two strike one to count now to Escobar. He'll be followed by Cutcher and then Matt Williams the third baseman maybe. Williams has a bat, though. Palmero in left. Martinez in center. 
And Jackson is in right. Big swing. Hey, you got a good fast breaking ball past him that time. Actually, it was a fastball that really uh, tailed away from that hitter, that left-handed hitter, and did its job beautifully. So now we've had three straight strikeouts by the Cub pitcher, Lynch. That brings up Cutcher. Little off the mark outside. Ball one. One out. Nobody on. He almost quit baseball, Jack, and finally they brought him up last year. He made a very good impression. One and one. Hit 346 at Phoenix. Came up seven home runs, 16 RBIs for the Giants in 71 ball games. Kind of a jack of all trades. Nothing he does really jumps out at you, but he does a lot of things well. Well, it's fun to see these names because if ever a couple of ball clubs down through the history of this game have contributed their share of great names to baseball, it's been the Giants and the Cubs. <laughs> Those of us who've been in this game for a half century, there's a fly ball left field, routine. Touchers out, that brings up Williams. Starting out when we were kids, have read such names down through the years that really have made their mark in history. McGraw's Giants, Mays, McCovey, Hubble, Matheson, Schumacher, Marischal, Mellot, Freddie Lindstrom, Rube Marquard, Cepeda, Bobby Thompson. Remember that 51 home run? What, all the Alou brothers. High foul ball out of play. Cubs. Boy, what a bunch of names the Cubs have contributed, huh? The Giants desperately want a new ballpark in San Francisco. Candlestick Park has not been satisfactory. What do you think will finally happen there, Steve? I know you have some very good San Francisco connections. I'm not certain, Jack. They were trying for the longest time to get something going in San Jose. Talked to a lot of different areas about leases and various places to build in parks, but nothing really solid yet out of Bob Lurie. Big swing. And so Williams is out, and that retires the side, and two more strikeouts. This guy has now struck out four of the last five men. Nice going, Mr. Lynch. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. And so as we go to the Cub half of number eight, the score, Cubs 10, the Giants 4. All right, the ball game moves now to the Cub half of number eight. Palmeiras is going to lead off. He's third in the batting order at this moment, followed by Brumley, and then Martinez, who's moved into center field. Score of the ball game, the Cubs 10, the Giants 4, Jack Brickhouse along with Steve Stone. And uh, hey, I just found out something from Arnie Harris. Boy, it just doesn't seem like this is possible that this guy is 17 years old now. Craig Harris, Arnie's boy, happy birthday on St. Patrick's Day to him. And it seems like day before yesterday that Jack Rosenberg and I were celebrating with Arnie, Craig's arrival on Earth. He was so pleased that he even stayed away from the track that day. And I only gave three to one, it'd be a girl. <laughs> strike one, a ball two strike one count. Here's a fella that the Cubs are counting on, if not this year, at least one of these days, to be a good, strong batter in that lineup. That one gets away, that's low inside. Well, he went two for six yesterday, so you know he can swing the bat, and he's done a pretty good job this spring. He's going to get better and better, Jack. You wonder what's going to happen when the season starts. I don't know if they'll want to platoon him or keep him up here, play him every day, or exactly what Gene Michael has in mind. Well, he is considered at this moment the number one rookie prospect in the Cactus League of all the teams down here. Well, you can understand it just watching yeah. him swing the bat. Yeah. Well, Rick Sutcliffe, it looks like, is going to get himself a win today. He went five innings, first Cub to go five innings. There's a line shot to left. Base hit. Palmero is going to try for two. 
No problem. And he's got it. Jack, you saw exactly why he's going to be a great hitter because of his ability to take the ball away from him and drill it to the left side. Watch it. This is textbook hitting on the part of Rafael Palmero. This is a good pitch. Low and away, he just reaches out. Slaps it into left field and runs for two bases. It was good to see Andre Dawson do the same thing with a high outside pitch. In other words, he went with the pitch and got himself a base hit to right. And uh, that's one of his great talents, the ability to go with the pitch. This is Brumley coming to bat now. Now he's got to pull the ball. Low and away. And of course, the reason for that, Steve, is because of, I know you're saying this for the benefit of a lot of the youngsters who might be watching, because now if he moves to the right side of that infield with this swing, that means the man on second can go to third with nobody out at this point. And the pitcher has read these stories before himself, so he's pitching them outside and making it difficult for him to pull. Well, now he has to come into Mike Brumley, and so Brumley probably will take him maybe a half a step closer to the plate, daring him to come inside, which is a pitch that he can handle and drive to the right side of the infield. That's a little low. Ball three. No strikes. Bob Melvin, the catcher for the Giants, and Matt Williams, the third baseman, their number one draft choice, are the only two men who played all day. Cubs leading 10 to 4. And the Giants are only going to get one more whack out of that. Breaking pitch is outside. That's ball four. That puts Ben on first and second. And now coming to bat, Mr. Martinez. Dave Martinez, also an outstanding prospect. As I started to say a little earlier, take a look at these names in the outfield for the Cubs. Bosley, Dayette, Dernier, Jackson, Martinez, Matthews, Moreland if you need him, Mumphrey, Palmero, Smith, Walker, maybe Rooms. It looks like things are beginning to develop. There's a base hit to right. That's going to go to the wall. The corner at 345. That's going to bring one in and maybe two. Vukovic says keep on coming, Brumley, and he scores. It's a three base hit. A three base hit for Martinez. Two more in for the Cubs. They lead now in this ball game by a score of 12 to 4. Dave Martinez gets ahead of the bat out, drills this one down the right side. And then he's off to the races. Palmero scores easily. Good speed by Martinez, and you like to see him turn on the ball. And then that great speed easily gets him in the third. And Jack, we mentioned it earlier, but uh, there'll be no rooms at the end tonight. They sent him down uh, earlier today. Yeah, I know. And uh, Grace also. But uh, it looks like the rebuilding of the Chicago Cubs farm system has begun to manifest itself. No doubt about it. This is the first year that I can remember in quite a while, Jack, when they brought up a group of youngsters from the minor leagues that are going to have an impact on this team. This is Wade Rowden getting his first shot of the day. He went in to play first base, and he is a good young hitter. 26 years old, came over from the Reds for Guy Hoffman, and he looks like he's got the inside track as one of the utility men along with Manny Trio. That is a check swing, and it's a little low. He checked it in time, apparently. There doesn't seem to be any appeal on this one. Ball two, strike one. During the summer, you'll see an appeal on that pitch. Ball two strike one. The infield pulled in of course as expected. There's a very high foul ball off to the left. Williams racing over can't get to it. It's about ten rows in. And it's a ball two strike two count now. Rodden the batter. Two and two. Cubs trying for their seventh win of the year today, and they certainly should get it now. They have 16 hits in this ball game. Ground ball taken by the third baseman, and for some reason or other, the man on third held up on that one for reasons that he will have to explain to me. Dave Martinez, when the ball was fielded by the third baseman, paused. 
when uh, he started out at full blast with the swing. Well, you I do suppose wonder. he thought maybe he's, he's going to get caught in a rundown. He might as well go ahead and see if he can stall for the other base runner's benefit. But anyway, it's an out. Let's you, take a look at this one. You Steve. do one of two things. You come down as far as the man at third base or you retreat on this slowly hit ball, Jack. And Dave Martinez is pretty much caught in no man's land. And on the play, Rowden reaches base on a fielder's choice. One on, one out. Darren Jackson getting his last look. He's one of the nine men sent down from the parent club to the minor league camp starting tomorrow. He's another man, Jack, that looks like he's going to have an impact on this big league team in the not too distant future. Defensively, he's without peer. And offensively, he seems to be getting better by every passing year. Man on base. Infield still pulled in a little bit. There's a well hit ball back to left field way back there goes Cockrell and he can't handle this one that's going to bring one in. Bukovic waves that arm like crazy. Bring that runner around as Rodden scores on a two base hit to the wall and left center by Jacobson or rather Jackson. Take another look at it Darren Jackson getting a good swing at a sinker that gets above the belt. That gets you some mileage as you can see over the head of Cockrell and here comes Rowden. John Vukovic has to have a sore right shoulder from waving him home today. Run number 13 for the Cubs. Watch it again. Cockrell going back can't get to it plays it off the wall but not in time to get anybody. You know I wonder if maybe he wasn't a little bit confused by some of the Giants who were running in the outfield out there. It looked like a, a little bit of a traffic jam and he was a little slow getting started on this one. I'm not going to say what it caught it under ordinary like circumstances. Cal Stanford game the play with the band in the end zone Jack when everybody was running around and confused yeah. as to what was happening. <laughs> Here we go. Hey fellas make way will you. <laughs> hey you guys. <laughs> guys out of the game pretty excited about this one. Damon Berryhill. This is Berryhill. Doubled and scored the last time up in the seventh inning. One out. Don Leppard, the old reserve catcher, one of the toughest guys in baseball. Pittsburgh told me a story about the same situation. It was the spring. They're running out there, and they run past the left fielder, and one of the fellows who ran, wait a minute, that's hit. That's way back there. Say goodbye to that one. Don't even try for it. Don't even fool yourself about a Maldonado. That one is gone. Hooey, boy. All right, here we go. Hey, hey. <laughs> All right. Hey, this game is turning into fun. Damon Berry has been pretty impressive. A double and a home run today, and he's staking his claim to the backup role to Jody Davis. The Cubs looking for a left-hander who can swing the bat behind Jody. And Barry Hill showing he can do just that. A couple of steps by Maldonado, and he doesn't even want to waste the effort. All right, Quinones, who's now the shortstop in the batter's box. Anyway, they're running in the outfield, and one of the fellas who was running by this left fielder was a pitcher who had decked this guy twice in the ball game for no reason at all. So the left fielder proceeded to belt him in the head and knock him down. <laughs> now, of course, both benches empty. And the fight Leppard left said field. we're all running out to the outfield to get in this fight, except I'm running alongside a guy in an enemy uniform, and I got to second base, and they say, why should I go all the way out there? So I just popped him right there at second base. <laughs> 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 a foul ball down the right field line. Ball two strike to the count. One away. Reminds Base me is empty. Of the great altercation between the Cubs and the Giants in Candlestick Park with oh. Bill Madlock. Oh, well, I remember that. George one. Mitterwald was catching, and Madlock goes out to the mound to get Jim Barr, realizes that George Mitterwald is right behind him. Ground ball, second baseman over for it. Woodward fields it, throws, and that's out number two. Go ahead, Steve. About the time, Mitterwald, Mitterwald wound up getting popped by Gary Matthews, but the catcher. I believe was Mark Hill at the time and he's following Madlock out and Madlock decides that there's no reason to go to the pitcher. I'll just turn around and pop Mark Hill which is what he did. 
the, one of the biggest fights I've ever seen, right in the middle of the diamond and candlestick. And I think you might have been there at the time. I was there. As a matter of fact, if you recall, there's a swing for, uh, that's Bosley batting now. Following the ball game, we're going to join at the movies in progress. Scores 15 to 4 right now. Anyway, when they unpiled everybody, there was Pete Reeser stretched out the Cub Coast. Now, he, Pete had a little heart condition. Everybody was worried about it. Well, he was all right, but it turned out the guy who knocked him out was the Cub pitcher, his own guy, Jack Aker, who swung and missed and hit Pete. And these are the things that happen. There's a one three put out, and that takes care of that. In the inning for the Cubs, a five run inning. That's their highest count so far today. Five runs. Four hits, including a triple and a home run. No errors. Nobody left. And so at the end of eight, the score of the ball game, the Cubs 15, the Giants four. Well, we go to the ninth, and Lee Smith is now pitching. And if he gets a save today, it'll be one of the great miracles of the year because the Cubs are out in front 15 to four. Here's another final. Uh-oh, North Carolina beat Michigan, 109. 97. Cubs leading here 15 to 4. Ninth inning. The Cubs three outs away from a long but welcome win. That's a little low. Bob Melvin. Smitty going out there for the fourth Aldrete. time. As you Go can ahead, see please. last year, Lee Smith making his fourth appearance has yet to be scored upon. Two hits, one run, but an unearned run, so he has no earned run average. Ball one, strike one. Palmero, Martinez, Jackson in left, center, and right. Brumley, Quinones, Noche. Rodney, infield third to first, Battery, Smith, and Barry Hill. Ball one, strike one. Cubs scored in each of the first five, then laid off for two innings, and then they came back with a five-run inning in the eighth. Ground ball, foul, third base side. Two and two. Smitty looks healthy this year, doesn't he? He sure does. He's thrown the ball real well. Big swing. That's out number one. Melvin started the day pretty good, pretty well. He hit a home run in the second inning, but he has done nothing since then. So that's out number one, and that'll bring up now Woodward. He's one for one. He got a single when he came in the ball game in the seventh inning. Smitty's had occasional rocky springs, but this year he seems to have his breaking pitch in good order, Jack. And if he gets the slider over, you know that that fastball can be murderous. You can't really look for a breaking pitch against Lee Smith because you know he's got plenty of gas. And when he throws a slider for a strike, most hitters can forget about it. That's a little, a little bit toward the outside corner, but not too much. So it's now strike two. Jim Quick, the plate umpire. Kibler at first. And over to third, Paul Rungi. Low and outside. Ball one, strike two. Outfield has been straight away and deep most all afternoon. Very high. Ball two, strike two. Oftentimes we've been asked, how can you call those pitches? How do you know they're where you say they are and what they are? And the answer to that is very simple. First of all, you find out what the guy throws. There's a ground ball. Flagged down by the second baseman. The throw, bad throw. Rowden couldn't handle it and keep a foot on the bag. So that'll be, well, let's see what they call it. See if they're going to call that a hit or an error. I think it's got to go as a base hit. You can see the nice backhanded stab. Now watch the throw and watch the effort by Wade Rowden. Almost gets stepped on. 
That's right. And is able to avoid it. Oh, uh, let's give him a hit. That's no cheap. So it's late. We'll sure. Give him a base hit. Nice stop by Paul. No cheap fires across. Now watch Rowden. Has to avoid just getting kicked in the head by Wooder. This then is Maldonado. Candy Maldonado. Low and away. I started to say, first of all, you find out what the guy throws. If he doesn't want to tell you, go to the enemy. They know. Go to any coach or the catcher on the other team. <laughs> but generally, they tell you. And watch your catcher. He'll tell you whether the pitch is high or low or inside or outside. Now, the only time you're going to get really fooled sometimes is on the low pitch because the umpire and the catcher may both block your view of that. You can't always tell. But just watch the catcher's mitt. If he reaches up for the ball, it's high. And you don't try to call every pitch either. Don't try to call all the curves, all the sliders, all the split finger fastballs and things like that. But generally, the velocity of a pitch will tell you whether it's a fastball or not. The one time you're going to get fooled once in a while is on a hard slider, which, of course, Smith throws. Because you'll mistake that one for a fastball every once in a while. High fly ball. Center fielder Martinez waiting for this one, shading his eyes. He's got it. That's two out. Two up now is Aldretti. Been a long afternoon for Mike Aldretti. Hasn't had a whole lot of success today. Yeah, he's one of the three on the Giants who have played the whole ball game. Melvin and uh, Williams and now Aldretti. That's two out. Man on base. Cubs ahead 15 to 4. Come on, Smitty, let's put it away. That's outside. That was a breaking ball. Ball one. Well, some of the folks have decided to try to beat the crowd here. And we see something we haven't seen much at the uh, Ho Ho Cam empty seats. That's a strike. Her ball up the knee. Just caught the outside corner. Ball one, strike one. But somehow after 15 runs and 18 hits, Jack, some of the drama's out of this one. And Al Rosen's prediction came true as far as the Cubs are concerned, but his Giants <laughs> lacked behind a little bit. <laughs> Goes for the outside pitch, fouls it off to the left. Ball one, strike two. You know, it's interesting when you hear everybody talk about their ball club in spring training. One thing always rings out, and that is, well, if my pitching stays healthier, well, if I can just get the third and fourth starter to come through, we're going to have a good year. And that's every manager at every <laughs> level says the same thing. One thing about baseball, baseball managers are optimistic. Football coaches are traditionally pessimistic. <laughs> Ball two, strike two. <laughs> two and two. Here's the crowd helping get strike three across. They got it, and this ball game is all over. Now, Reddy strikes out. That's the third time today he's 0 for 5 in the ball game. No runs, one hit, no errors, a man left. Final score, the Cubs 15, the Giants 4 here at Mesa. We'll be back in a moment, Steve and I, with a recap on the game. 